Tonight on Canyons News, we look into a social media trend gone wrong. How a possible strike in Hollywood could impact the jobs of local residents. And we welcome back an event to celebrate local cancer survivors. Canyons News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Good evening and welcome to this edition of Canyons News. I'm Matt Frieda, and here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. A local high school is reeling from a series of problems involving student behavior. Here's Kyle Kawamoto with more on the investigations. Art High School was alive with action these past two weeks from TikTok challenges to threats on campus. The devious lick or the bathroom challenge has hit the high school bathrooms resulting in suspensions across campus. I spoke with Hart District's Public Relations Officer Dave Caldwell about this TikTok issue. There's going to be an emphasis on just doing the right thing, uh, being responsible, uh, not partaking in these sorts of actions. These can be serious offenses, We're talking vandalism and, and such. And uh, the last thing we want certainly is for anyone to be getting into trouble over something that's really quite silly. Communicating is everything. It is important to communicate to others because this can help prevent destruction of property to threats among other students. Student and staff safety is our number one priority. And so the main objective really is to, uh, to talk with families and talk with parents and to remind parents that a conversation with their, with their students uh, to help them to understand making the right choice is, uh, is, is the best way to go. Last Friday, there was an incident involving a student threatening another student by writing a message on the bathroom wall. Until today, on the 27th of September, a student confessed for writing the message on the bathroom wall. Principal Jason Duchemont of Hart High School sent out this email. He stated, We were able to act quickly to resolve this situation due to the fact that students and the community members once again saw something and said something. It, it really doesn't do anything for you um, as a student to be, to be doing this kind of things. This is not a good choice. This is not a good decision to make to, to do something like this. With both of these incidents occurring so close to one another, the main focus is safety. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Kyle Kamo. Deputies are working to find the person responsible for stabbing a man in a Canyon country shopping set. Reporter Charles Calvario has the story. At 1.45 in the morning, Soledad Canyon Road, there was a stabbing where the fire department received a phone call that an injured male would stab wounds. Upon our arrival, we found one male adult. He had been stabbed um, in the back of his head. He was transported to a nearby hospital um, with serious injury. We have one suspect um, that remains outstanding at this time and is still in our investigation. Deputies did say that the individual was in stable condition. The uh, suspect is being described as a male Hispanic adult. Crime seat tape and trail of blood could be seen around the parking lot Monday morning as the sheriff's officials worked to investigate the incident. I'm Charles Cavario, reporting for Canyons News. With COVID case rates continuing to drop in California, test clinics have played a part in that, including one here at COC. Greg Haro has more. With classes coming back onto COC campus, the school is requiring staff and students to show a form of ID with either a recent negative COVID test or proof of vaccination. Luckily for students and staff, there is a COVID drive through clinic and an on-site vaccination clinic on campus. When Eric Carnish was asked if the clinics are just for staff and students or open to the public as well, this is what he had to say. So the drive through testing location is open to the public um, and it's open Monday through Saturday and you can go uh, online and uh, book an appointment uh, to, to get tested. The percentage of students and staff that are taking classes on campus that are already vaccinated are at a surprisingly high amount. Um, about 75% of employees are uh, currently vaccinated. So, and the last uh, figures that I saw, sh uh, I think about half of the students that are taking on classes on campus are vaccinated. If you're worried about the time to get tested or vaccinated, don't worry, there is enough time till the clinics are gone. So the drive through testing center uh, down uh, on the corner of Rockwell and Valencia is scheduled to be here. Uh, through the end of the calendar year, so through the end of December. So, um, and then the testing uh, that's available in the student center is um, right now scheduled uh, through the end of next week. And then we're trying to uh, find another partner who can come in and uh, continue those services. 
In mid-September, the CDC approved COVID-19 booster shots, but not for everyone. So right now, booster shots are limited. Um, so you have to be age 65 or older or immunocompromised. So, um, you know, it's, it's really a kind of a, a smaller group of, of the population that, that's eligible for booster shots right now. For Canyons News, I'm Greg Haro. While classes here at COC are being offered on campus, many students have opted to take their courses online. Kate Caustic tells us more about the absence on campus. This is an ordinary classroom, but recently there's nothing ordinary about it. For starters, it's empty. On any normal day, there would be students sitting in these seats like these gentlemen right here. But as lifestyles have changed, we've gone online. And these seats are now empty. Students are opting to stay online to fit their new schedules that the pandemic has molded for them. Classrooms left empty, hallways desolate, and vending machines just waiting to be used. School officials are trying to figure out why. I mean, as, as the country, you know, continues to kind of recover and regroup from the pandemic, it's led to a lot of changes. And, uh, you know, we're certainly not immune to that uh, in higher education. So, um, you know, they're, they're not sure what they want to do. And, uh, and so I think, you know, just that, that overall feeling of un uncertainty has, has had an impact on us as, as, uh, as it has on, you know, a lot of other uh, aspects of life. After talking to students like Pauline Shaw, it's evident that some are also nervous to make changes to the way that they learn once more. I'm fully online because I didn't want to go through that big adjustment of being in person again, especially because we've been online for the past two years. But moreover, students have had 19 months to get used to the positives that come with online learning now, and it's just hard to turn back for some. Personally, it's better for me just because I started a job now and like if I were to go in person, I don't think I would have as much time for it. College administrators say to expect more on-campus classes offered in the spring in hopes of bringing cougars out of their dens and the campus back to life. From Canyons News, I'm Kate Costick. And now let's throw it over to Sydney Sweet with What's Trending. Thanks, Matt. I'm Sydney Sweet and here's What's Trending. Getting voters into the booth in the past year and a half has proved to be a challenge. The COVID-19 pandemic caused many people to opt out in order to avoid exposure. In a massive push to improve voter participation, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill to send mail-in ballots to every voter. In an official statement, California Secretary of State Shirley Weber says, the more people who participate in elections, the stronger our democracy is and the more we have insurance that elections reflect the will of the people of California. Under the new mandate, mail-in ballots are required to be sent to voters at least 29 days ahead of the election. The federal budget for the 2022 fiscal year is still awaiting approval from Congress, which has proved many investors to question their holdings. President Joe Biden proposes an infrastructure overhaul with a federal spending limit of around $6 trillion. The large price tag is tripping certain stockholders up, including Ed Adams, a local investor who says, because of uncertainty with international housing markets, government spending and debt, people are fleeing to safety, pulling their money out of the market. Crypto is probably going to blow up in the next week or so. The Nasdaq saw a 2% drop in points yesterday, in the steepest decline since March. Deliberation over the budget is predicted to last into 2022, and investors are uncertain of future returns. On a less serious note, let's flip the script to something more savory. Santa Clarita residents have much to be excited about, as one of the most popular restaurants in town gets a new lease on life, or land. In-N-Out is one of SCV's hometown favorites, with three locations just inside the valley. Now, the burger joint is set to open another set of doors right at the foot of Magic Mountain. The Spectrum Commercial Real Estate website boasts the location has an excellent visibility to the 5 freeway and sees daily traffic counts of 380,000 cars. There is no official statement regarding construction or grand opening dates as of yet. I'm Sydney Sweet and that's what's trending. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at canyonsnews.com. Hey, Matt, I hear there's other ways SUV is growing. That's right, Sydney. Well, those 380,000 cars on the 5 may be the reason for longer commutes here in Santa Clarita. 
but is there an explanation as to why? Ryan Rivera delved deeper into this question. In the past 10 years, over 50,000 residents have moved to Santa Clarita. Real estate agent Taylor Kelstrom gives us more information why. I think a huge part of it is actually our school system. Our school system for young families is really desirable for their kids to grow up and be in a good school and a good environment and a good area. And I think Santa Clarita offers all those things. I believe there's no schools in the area that are under an 8 out of 10. During the pandemic, things changed a lot for everyone, including staying at home for almost a year. Now that a lot of these companies are allowing their employees to work from home, so you can actually, if you're moving, if let's say you live uh, in Glendale area, well, and you were, you were working in downtown LA, well, that, you're living there and you're paying more because the commute is smaller. But now if you're able to work from home, you can actually afford more of a home up in Santa La Carita with the good schools for your kids because you don't have to commute to work anymore. You can work from home. Families are not the only ones moving to SEV. The job market here is also very appealing for single individuals within the last six months that Amazon is renting a warehouse out here. And there's big companies such as Scorpion and Sunkiss that are actually located in Santa Clarita. I'm Ryan Rivera for Canyons News. Taco stands are being removed across Canyon country, but one on Soledad Canyon still remains. Mark Monroy serves up the details. Hispanic Heritage Month a time where the country and its Hispanics can celebrate their culture, from family businesses to the culture scene in Los Angeles and all around Southern California, from the parties, the clothing, and most of all the food that is enjoyed all around Latin America, where well, the food now makes its way here to Santa Clarita. You know, this city is like uh, outside of LA, near from LA. There's no uh, normal food like Mexican food, or like other country food, like traditional food that make us to start a business with Mexican culture. In a Hispanic household, family is everything, and in most cases, they stay together as one throughout their entire lives. Some opening businesses, and many making mouth-watering tacos and quesadillas. This is a family business, and everybody learns something, so we, like that, we got the opportunity to, to work. There are some obstacles in the way. As in Santa Clarita, a food permit is required before any food can be prepared or served to the public. Difficult to get a permit and then you need a lot of things, especially a restaurant or a food truck and then that is too expensive, we're just barely starting. The city tells Hernandez that he cannot serve food without a permit. However, Hernandez will not stop before he raises enough money to get a credential. When they can, the city show out and throw everything like the food and vegetables, sauces, I was first class. And they tell us to go away, that we can be here because we don't got the permits, but like I said, it's not that easy to get the permits. With Hispanic Heritage Month near and close, Hernandez is willing to deliver the Hispanic culture to the city far beyond this month. Reporting for Canyons News, this is Mark Monroy. Coming up next on Canyons News, residents channel the force with the help of a local martial arts studio and an update on the looming production shutdown. Stay tuned. College of the Canyons creates possibilities. It's a gateway to opportunities. A place where students learn they can believe in themselves. Behind every possibility at College of the Canyons are the people. Together we focus on achieving success, one student at a time. That focus is a reflection of what we value. It defines who we are. We are. We are. We are College of the Canyons.
Santa Clarita Valley could be headed for a work stoppage as workers demand better conditions from management. Jeremy Thompson checks in from a dream factory on the verge of a shutdown. Workers from the motion picture and television industry rallied this weekend in a show of solidarity ahead of a strike authorization vote on October 1st. Everybody here, they're, it's like, it's, they're not in this for like, what's in it for me or what am I gonna get? It's like, we're in here united together because we all want to change the culture of the industry and we wanna do it together and we have to do it together. So we're very united. That unity, centered on concerns about working condition in the entertainment industry, could soon lead to a shutdown of a major portion of the SCV economy. Filming is the main sector for uh, Santa Clarita. Yeah, last year, uh, our estimated economic impact was over $34 million. Uh, that was the highest that it had ever been. Uh, COC alone, I think, sees around $200,000 per year in the filming. Uh, and, and so it's a, it's a big contributor to our local economy out here. The film industry has been a part of the Santa Clarita Valley's history since William S. Hart starred in silent films. By the city's most recent estimate, more than 6,000 residents are in the industry where crews are now squaring off against producers. Believe. They don't believe we're serious about our proposals. They don't think we're serious about some basic core human and worker right principles. I think the more attention we can draw to the, what's going on and, and encourage people to get informed, uh, the better. Um, you know, these are basic worker rights that we're asking for and, um, you know, it, it doesn't get any more simple than that. Nobody wants to strike. What we want is to be dealt with fairly in negotiations. We just want to be dealt with fairly and have humane concerns addressed and not scoffed at. Producers wholly rejected the union's most recent proposal. The coming strike vote could lead to an industry-wide shutdown, and leaders are hoping that their members... Vote yes! For Canyons News, I'm Jeremy Thompson. The Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center at College of the Canyons is back with live in-person shows. Reporter Claudia Canchola brings us more. It is home to all CSC student productions, however its audience seating has remained untouched since March 2020. After an almost two year hiatus, live in person shows at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center at CSC are set to begin again later this year. Like other departments on campus, the center was tasked with moving operations online when the pandemic began. Dean of School of Visual Arts and Performing Arts Jennifer Smoles recalls difficulties of the transition, having been midway of the student production Pippin. We were able to transition successfully. It wasn't easy. It was a lot of work, a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of brainstorming, but we were committed to helping our students complete and to finish that project. With campus being open again, the center is taking no time to resume live in person productions. Preparations for a stage play are already underway. Well, our very next show um, is actually a production of Antigone from our theater department, and it starts Thursday, November 18th. That's the opening night, and then it runs through Sunday, um, November 21st. To adhere with COVID guidelines and reduce audience space, Antigone will be showcased in the Black Box Theater. The production will also be live-streamed on the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center URL on the COC website. To enter the theater, spectators will be required to wear a mask and show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test result. Tickets will be free and offered at a first-come, first-served basis. Our faculty are very excited. Our students seem to be very excited as they come back, and I'm excited to see them you know, after these productions and see how it all went. A relaunch of the center's website, along with information about the new season, will be announced soon. The exact date, however, remains unknown. From Canyon News, I'm Claudia Canchola. Well, you may be familiar with tennis or badminton, but another longtime sport seems to be growing in popularity here in the SCV. Here's more with Lauren Ham. With the swing of a paddle, the match begins. It's the curiosity for the game that drives them to try America's fastest growing sport, but it's the accessibility that keeps them playing. Like many, Efren Rehipolito picked up the sport just recently after years of playing tennis. I was playing one Saturday on this side of the court and they had pickleball games over here and it looked like it was interesting. There's a class that they offer. So I said, okay, I found out that it was on a Thursday, I signed up and here I am. The Paseo Club opened its pickleball courts around six months ago and already they've seen a spike in popularity among members. 
tennis and pickleball coach Chris Knoll was all too aware of this spike. Like the tournament scene started growing and people saw what they could do with the game and that it wasn't just, you know, for a retirement home. And then it's a, and it's an actual really fun game. If people, you know, put all the all the outside stuff around it down and just play the game, they find it's really fun. While many are just now finding the sport, others are all too aware. Siblings Lauren and Ryan Pond have been a part of the pickleball scene for two years and they have no plans to stop. Coming straight off the tennis courts, the doubles partner saw the appeal of pickleball when family friends first told them about it. It's easy to pick up, so it's a lot less challenging than tennis is and it's accessible. Um, it's not obviously the court isn't as big as a tennis court, it's much easier to play than tennis. Um, it's really fun, the community is really inviting and welcoming to new players. Next time you find yourself with a little bit of free time, the pickleball community of SCV is waiting with open arms. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Lauren Hanna. Sports season at COC is in full effect and athletes must now follow new COVID protocols. Reporter Caden West tells us more about the new requirements. After 18 months, sports are back at College of the Canyons. However, new COVID protocols have been implemented to allow for safe play. Our COVID protocol here at the college is all of our student athletes have to have a physical in order to participate. Um, they have to either be vaccinated or weekly testing, um, and they have to prove they have no symptoms and no close contacts. Athletes input all of this information on a program called Sportswear. On Sportswear, an athlete can access their COVID, medical, and insurance information. Every day, an athlete participates in practices or games they must check in at the health screening stations where they take their temperature, answer questions regarding symptoms or close contacts, and are given a wristband that clears them to take part in athletic activities. Athletes are not allowed to participate in practices or games unless they are cleared in sportswear and have completed the daily COVID screening. Sportswear is also completely digital, which allows athletes to input their information from any location. In the past, you'd have to sit everybody down with these with these folders and paper and, and, you know, up close and stuff, where now it's like an online class. They can go on Canvas and they can do sportswear on the computer. And so that part's been really nice because they, they don't have to come to school. They can do it remotely. Um, so in that way, it's been really nice as well. Despite the new changes, athletes have been supportive of the process. I mean, no one wants to do it, but we have to. And so they made it as easy as possible, so it's quite, pretty nice. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Caden West. A galaxy far, far away can now be found down the street. Daniel Rios followed the path of the Jedi to learn more. The Life Force Academy takes place right here at Iron Fist Martial Arts every Tuesday and Thursday. The goal of this academy is simple. To teach their students how to fight with lightsabers with martial art techniques. Right when about Force Awakens came out, I decided, you know what, I want to buy myself a nice lightsaber. And then I came across dueling sabers. I said, why don't we create something where everyone can have fun, especially you know Star Wars fans who may not be into martial arts, but you know want to use, learn how to use a lightsaber. So we created a curriculum based around a lightsaber, but using real uh, Asian weapon styles. The academy teaches two different styles: combat, which is more focused on the dueling side and competitive side and theatrical, which is more focused on the lore side of things, where you can put on a skit with a partner. Yeah, so we kind of took in a combination between um, like Asian um, sword fighting and European sword fighting, we put them together. So we've used a lot of a uh, mixture between kendo and uh, kinjitsu, which would be basically samurai sword fighting, and kendo, which is stylized fencing for uh, Japanese fencing. Took in a little bit of Chinese um, kung fu we throw in a little bit, and a lot of uh, European one-handed and two-handed sword fighting styles. And just kind of combined them together, took what we liked and built and everything, and this is what we built our curriculum on for. Outside of this, some participants of the academy like to compete using what they've learned and duel against other swordsmen across the country. Yeah, there's actually a, a, a few different clubs um, uh, around the area, the, the greater LA area, that we like to um, have inter-club tur uh, tournaments with and uh, inter-club kind of dueling nights. If this academy interests you, you can visit lightforceacademy.com or email at lightforceacademy at gmail.com. The first class is free, and you are provided a lightsaber. For Canyons News, I'm Daniel Rios.
Santa Clarita is known as one of the fastest growing cities in America, due in part to its award-winning school system. Sydney Sweet gives us a glimpse into a local organization working to fund our school districts. Despite the lack of adequate state funding, Santa Clarita was ranked in the top 12% of U.S. high schools by U.S. News. The WISH Foundation aims to bridge the gap between what the state of California is willing to give and what will help SCV students flourish. What their needs are are not met by state education funding, and that's where we come in. Tonight, the WISH Foundation is raising funds through celebrating the music of the Beatles. Over 40 musicians provide a groovy soundtrack for a good cause. SCV locals showed up in droves to support the WISH Foundation's goal in improving our school's STEAM learning. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Any money that we invest in the school district is money that we invest in our kids. And literally, the kids are the next generation, so I feel like supporting them in any way we can is really important. The WISH Foundation also prioritizes mental health programs. There's so much need for the kids like that they're coming back to school and they have a place to go to talk to a counselor, to have a quiet place, to just take a break when they need it. Because all mental health is such an important part of our kids' well-being here in the Valley. The purpose behind the WISH Foundation is to give our students every chance they can to succeed. Some kids are athletes, some kids are musicians, some kids are academics, and so it's about helping touch all those students. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Sydney Sweet. And last, the coronavirus pandemic changed lives all around the world. But for those battling cancer, their fight became even more complicated. A local Santa Clarita group shares their challenges to defeat the disease. Face painting, luminaria bags, t-shirt coloring, and a personal connection from each and every volunteer. These are the faces and stories of Santa Clarita Relay for Life and their fight against cancer. Relay for Life is a worldwide fundraising effort for cancer research that provides support and access to life-saving screenings. Last week, the group held a rally at the Westfield Valencia Town Center to raise funds for the 2021 Relay. But much like every other aspect of life, the COVID-19 pandemic has made an already difficult battle even more challenging. Early on in the pandemic, yeah, there were people that were waiting that were two, three months behind on their chemo treatments. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that could be life-threatening. During the first two months of the pandemic, screening rates for colorectal and breast cancer dropped by over 85%. The charities have really taken a, a big, big hit with COVID. Despite the adversity the pandemic has presented, that didn't stop these veteran volunteers from continuing their fight against the disease. It took a year for my journey with all of the uh, treatments and everything. And then the next year I decided to dedicate my time to give back. Volunteers include survivors and caregivers, some who have worked with Relay for over 20 years, creating an everlasting bond. Getting cancer was really uh, it's a really a hard thing and a bad thing, but some good comes out of it, and it's all the friends that I've made that are here today that I have made over the years, and they're friends. The Santa Clarita Relay for Life ceremony is scheduled for October 2nd at the Valencia Town Center Mall. All are welcome to come out and join the fight against cancer. And if you do, you may just come across a friendly face or two. For Canyons News, I'm Matt Frieda. And that'll do it for this edition of Canyons News. For more stories and information, visit us online at canyonsnews.com. I'm Matt Frieda. Have a great night.